Hello everyone, we are back with our Arcanum series, and let's get right to the episode. So, uh, I went back and sold a bunch of stuff, so I have some room for the dredge, and repaired my armor, because it was getting pretty low. So we are ready to go to the dredge. We just talked to this guy here, and this is uh, by the throne room. Throne room's up here, and the dredge is just this doorway down here. And he'll, there'll be a guard standing in front, and you can just tell him that you are cleared to go to the dredge. And there you go. So this place is uh, not too bad. There are some uh, pretty high level golems in here, which will destroy your armor. So you definitely want to save. And you also want to make sure that you have the uh, armor repaired and enough supplies to possibly get through this. So at this point, one of the strategies I like to do to conserve fatigue is to put Agility of Fire and possibly Hasten on the dog. And then I will make my other companion, like Virgil, a tank and give him the uh, Force Shield. So typically you don't need to have both Agility and hasten on them. Um, what you can do is though is just only use hasten and the force shield whenever you are encountering a tough mob. Other than that you can just keep agility on the dog for the most part and it gives him like four or five attacks per turn which is really nice. And it's not very expensive to keep up and running the whole time. Alright, so I'm going to go through with this and uh, probably speed it up to get to the end where Log Hair is.
All right, I did want to quickly mention that the uh, heirloom that you're looking for for the quest is in here. Um, you can't unlock this by normal means. So I can't go ahead and say I want to unlock this using my unlock cantrip. See, it fails. Even though I'm like the maximum level, you can do that. You have to get the key. So we'll do that and we will continue on. The key's further up.
All right, so we do have the key now. So we are able to open that chest um, to our keychain. But we can now uh, take care of that quest uh, back where I mentioned that the actual item was. So we'll do that here in a little bit. Uh, the next group of beings is uh, the Great King, which is pretty uh, strong. So I'm a little concerned about this fight. Um, I'm gonna have to just lock him down and keep him from moving while we kill everything else. So I'm gonna uh, get some more stamina, a little more, and then uh, probably do a bunch of spell buffs, and then we will go in. All right, we have completed the uh, area, and so we have to go through the passage now, and we will find uh, the king. There he is. This is the pathway to the throne room. So much easier to do that that process. So we're gonna go through some dialogue, and then that'll be it for this uh, this episode. What? Who dares disturb the exile of Thunderstone? Forgive me, your highness. I had no choice but to... What? An elf? Have you any idea? I dream every day of the death I would rain down on your cursed race. And here you are, violating my solitude, my sorrow. Please, Loghair. You must listen to me. No, stranger. You must listen to me. I've come here to writhe upon the blade of my sorrow, to live the thousand deaths by the ancient right of kings. These laws are passed down through the mountain from the beginning of remembered time. Your life is forfeit to them, as is my own. Do you understand? Stop, I come with news of the Black Mountain Clan. Yes, I'm very sure you do. You stole their honor and then stripped me of mine. I've thought much on your previous threats, Elf. Perhaps we should negotiate once again. What? I'm trying to find the Black Mountain Clan. What? How do you know? Speak quickly. Your life still hangs in the balance. Fine, I have a story to tell. Forgive me, my elven friend. So much has happened to me. I've raged in these caverns for so long. I know you had nothing to do with what has gone before. I understand, Loghair, but what did happen so long ago? In all the time since the judgment was passed, I have never spoken of it. My shame has held my tongue. It seems that very shame shall now finally... Bring the betrayal to light. Please, these elves who approached you, who were they? 
a delegation of elves sent from the Silver Lady herself. They came not long after Bates had built his first steam engine. Technology in the hands of the human had spread and advanced at an alarming rate, and the elves were hit first and hardest. Uh, who is the Silver Lady? The Silver Lady is Mother Queen to the Elves. She is very old, much older than I, and very powerful in the ways of magic. Where does she live? In Kintara, the oldest city of the Elves, somewhere within the Glimmering Forest. Have you ever spoken to the Silver Lady directly? No. I'm not sure if any but elven eyes have ever been laid upon her. Over the years, we have corresponded through messengers. Elves and dwarves are very different, and we tend to stay away from one another. But our relationship, as culturally strained as it may be, has always been civil. We don't necessarily understand one another, but we've always respected the differences. What had the spread of technology done with the, to the elves? Their forests. Their forests were being cleared with the help of technology. Massive, steam-powered clear-cutters. The oldest groves, towering and untouched for thousands of years, were being destroyed without prejudice. I saw much of this with my own eyes. The ancient forest of Morbahan is little more than a graveyard now. Were there elves living in the forest of Morbihan? I'm unsure, but I don't believe so. But the delegation said that the crimes were against all elves. You see, elves feel a very strong connection to the world, to nature, and especially to forests. It's said that elven souls reside in the oldest trees. I don't know if this is true, but I do know there to be a strong connection between living things and magic. Was the Silver Hair Lady angry about the Moraben Forest? The delegation told me that she was extremely hurt and angry about the damage that had been done. According to them, because of her age and power, she was hurt the most by the clearing. Her connection to the forests was strongest of all. Why did technology spread so fast among the humans? There are many reasons. Humans, in comparison with the other races, live such short lives. Because of this, I believe that every human action is motivated through fear. The fear of death. You would think that this was a relative issue, that humans would learn to live with this limitation and accept it. This is not true. And? And, therefore, humans, when confronted with any situation, see it through the veil of their own mortality. Achieve, advance, perform. Humans are constantly driven by the shadow of their own death. This fear, unfortunately, clouds their judgment, deadens their sense of right and wrong. Humans act first, think later, and feel last of all. And in terms of technology? When Bates was given a look at our technology, he was overcome. As a human, his first thought was, what can I use this for? when it should have been, what is the cost of its use? Technology exploded in their hands because they are not burdened with our longevity. Humans rarely live long enough to see the consequences of their mistakes. What are the major differences between dwarves and elves? I've said before that there is a strong connection between living things and magic, and the magic flows the most strongly in the veins of elves. Dwarves are very different. We feel a strong connection to the earth, but in another way. We love those things which are eternal, unchangeable, earth, stone, metal. In those things are strength, but not life as you know it. 
and the elven delegation. What did they demand of you? They said that if the Black Mountain Clan was not punished, there would be war. War! I told them that a punishment was already being decided upon, and that we, as dwarves, would deal with them. They refused. They claimed rights as the afflicted, and therefore as the judges. They agreed that exile was a suitable punishment, but they wanted to be the vessel of that retribution. We elves are not a warlike people. It is not in our nature. No. I know that there was a time of violence, many years ago, among the elves. But from what I know of them, they are a very rational, peace-loving people. They know that ultimately, war benefits no one. I was very surprised when they came and threatened it. I see. There seem to be some inconsistencies here. Yes. The more we talk about it, I begin to get the same feeling. Yes, the elves would have been angry, but would they really have threatened war? Morbahan was a tragedy, but directly affected none of the elven communities. Perhaps my fear blinded me to such things before. And now this mystery. Where are the dwarves of the Black Mountain clan? What was it you feared, Loghair? Why agree to the terms? I am very old, stranger. You may know nothing of me, but believe me when I tell you that I've seen enough dwarven blood spilled to fill a thousand lifetimes. Have you any idea what it would mean for there to be a war between the elves and the dwarves? Arcanum itself would not survive the conflict. And I was so very tired of filling tombs with the bodies of my people. But? But nothing. I chose to spare the dwarves, the world, the price of such a war. What was one clan's honor in comparison with the sheer cataclysm that would result otherwise? You ask what rights they had? None. They merely forced a choice, and I chose the path of least resistance, the least pain. That was my betrayal, stranger. What do you mean? You were merely acting out of concern. But that is the point. I am king of the dwarves. It is my responsibility to lead them, to protect them. But most importantly, it is my responsibility to defend their honor, their dwarven honor. By allowing my own fear or concern, regardless of how justified that fear might be, to overshadow their honor was an unforgivable transgression. Being a king isn't always easy. Even as king, the choice is never mine as to whether even one dwarf is stripped of his honor. I should have brought this to the people, or just flatly refused from the beginning. I was a coward, a failure, and this exile is my punishment. Given the choice now, I would have waged war against all of Arcanum to uphold the honor of that foolish little clan. I know, I know. That's because your stone is still true. What? What do you know of the nature of Dwarven Stone? You, an outsider? How could you possibly know of such things? Randvar put, put his faith in me. Perhaps you could as well. Perhaps. But you are not even a dwarf. These are beliefs and concepts it takes a lifetime to reconcile. How could you possibly begin to understand how I feel? I know that it is difficult to live by both stone and shape. Yes, I know. I've thought long and hard about this. Dwarven stone tells me that any transgression against our honor is unthinkable. But my shape, as king as their father, told me to protect them. I'd shouldered so much of their pain, I could do it no longer. But isn't part of life defining that shape, learning from mistakes? Yes. Your words sound true, stranger. I know that no man is flawless. But I also know that each man's load to bear is different. A larger load carries more responsibility. Mine is heaviest of all. 
Therefore, the price for my betrayal must be the most costly. What is the nature of that betrayal? The nature of the betrayal? I failed my people. Isn't that what is most important here? The betrayal was against their stone. It seems, sadly, that my own stone is flawed. No, that was Lorik's flaw. Yours is a conflict of shape. You shame me, stranger. Your words are harsh, but undeniably true. Perhaps you are correct, but it doesn't change what I've done, nor the price I need to pay. It is best if you just leave an old dwarf here to rot. It is your place to right this wrong. No, you must pay the price. I cannot do this for you. How then? How can I do so? You must return to your people. Be true to the stone and shape. By Elberic? You are right. I've been blinded by my own shame and not seen the true betrayal. I've betrayed myself and my people along with me. I shall return, stranger. I shall be king. By the name of Thunderstone, I swear it. I'm so very glad, but I still need information. Of course. I'll do anything within my power to help you. Those elves who came to you, how can I find them? As I said, they were supposedly sent from the Silver Lady. I know very little of them. But I do have a name. Perhaps that will be enough for you to uncover this mystery. What is that name? The delegation was sent by someone named Mingorad, and I had many correspondences with this elf. Here is a letter that was sent to me by him. Where can I find this Mingorad? I am unsure. The entire situation reeks of deception. I would tell you to seek him in Kintara, but I don't even know if the delegation was sent from there or not. Regardless, you may want to begin your search there. The Silver Lady might know of this Mingorad. And where is Kintara? I don't know, unfortunately. The location of Kintara is a well-guarded secret, but I do know it lies within the Glimmering Forest. The small town of Stillwater lies near the edge of that forest. Perhaps there you might find someone who knows where it is. Here, I'll mark your map with Stillwater's location. Thank you, Loghair. I will do my best to find out the truth. Wait. I'm much to blame for this situation. My fear and cowardice have helped in bringing about this tragedy. I feel I must do something to help you. Please, take Harrow, the first axe of my family. Its blade strikes true and deep in the hands of the righteous, especially if those hands are dwarven. Within it is the strength of the Thunderstones. I give it to you. I will put it to you good use. I'm sure you will. Godspeed on your quest, my friend. There is an easier way to return to the surface. There is a secret passage just behind me that Randver uses when he comes to speak with me. Within it, you will encounter no trouble. Good luck. Thank you and goodbye. I make preparations to return to my clan. Good luck, my friend. All right, so we have restored the king to his throne, which is good. And we now have the next part of the quest. So that's going to be it for this episode. I appreciate you watching. Thank you. And hit a like if you like this. And I will see you in the next episode. Thanks and goodbye.